Welcome to the Untold Tales Audio Anthologies. Written by Dr. Jeffrey A. Robinson and narrated by Melissa Del Toro Schaffner. Perfect Memories Jeff woke her up with coffee, just the way she liked it. Iced coffee with hazelnut flavoring and too much sweetener. Carrying the large thermos to her bedside, he sat down next to her and lightly stroked her arm. Barb moaned slightly and peeked at him through a tiny slit in one eyelid. Come on, he said. It's time to get up. The grandchildren have been up for hours. I know, I know, she said, moaning loudly. Sitting up, she rearranged the pillows until she could sit and lean back on them. Then she took the coffee and sipped it waiting for the caffeine to hit her system to help her wake up. She hated mornings. In the distance, they could both hear laughter and voices of the children. Barb could clearly hear their five-year-old granddaughter, Harley, periodically squeal with delight as her brother, Reese, who was eight, roared like a monster, chasing her. What are they up to? asked Barb. Well, they were both up early. I fed them and then turned them loose to play. Right now, they're destroying the living room again. They've moved all the furniture and grabbed blankets from the hallway closet to build a fort from the cushions and chairs. From what they've said, they're only safe inside their cave of sofa cushions because there are monsters outside. Reese is the primary monster, but I guess I'm a monster too. There was another high-pitched squeal and another roar as they ran through the house. Grimacing and smiling at the sounds at the same time, Barb asked. How's the weather? My knee hurts. Well, the rain from yesterday has dried up, so your knee should be fine. The good news is that it doesn't look like it's going to be too hot today. That was a great thing, he thought. Summers here could be brutal. Do you want some breakfast? Not right now, she replied. Maybe later. Just let me wake up for a bit. Once more, there sounded a cry and a scream of laughter. Wow, she said. They're really going at it, aren't they? Yeah, I wish I could bottle that energy. I could use some of it right now. The scampering of feet as one of them chased the other down the hallway grew louder and then faded. The distant voices disappeared into muffled whispers as they found their way back into the secret cave they had built in the living room. You seem sad, he said. Reaching out, he squeezed her hand. I can't help it, she said. This... All of this is wonderful, and what you've done is amazing. It's just that... It's just that I remember, and I know. No matter how much I try, I know that they're not real. But they are real. They're as real as they can be, Jeff insisted. To them, they're the same children that they were when I recorded them. They live and they breathe. They feel every sensation and every joyous moment of being children. But it's not the same. No matter how cute and adorable they are, they're not real. I know because I remember. The real Reese and Harley grew up and moved away. But we still have them here, he said. They still play at your feet and call you Nana, and climb up into your lap so you can hold them and stroke their hair, and whisper stories in their ears. I know, and they're perfect. They never change. They never age. They're the perfect memories. But that's all they are. Memories. Beautiful snapshots in time. A time that has passed and moved on. The real children left years ago. And they now have families of their own. These two, they're just imitations. Cartoons. Yes, that's what they are. They are three-dimensional cartoons. Snapshots in time of my most favorite memories. The personification process that animated the androids you built was perfect. They don't change. They don't age. They're perfect copies in every way. They're identical to how they were the day you took them to your lab and recorded them. They make me incredibly happy, but they make me sad at the same time. They're exactly the way they used to be. But I miss the real them. I wish they'd stop by with their own families more often. They're supposed to come over for dinner again this weekend, he reminded her. I plan to cook a barbecue. You'll see them then. I know, I know. I'm really looking forward to it. He leaned over and kissed her, and she hugged him tightly in return. 
Thanks anyway, she said. It's okay. I'm glad they're here. Really, it would be too lonely and too empty around this place if they weren't here. There was a crashing sound from the living room, and the laughter there suddenly stopped. The silence was deafening, and Jeff stood and smiled. I'd better go. I think they knocked something down. I'll chase them outside to play in the yard. You get dressed. I have to clean up the kitchen anyway. I made them chocolate chip pancakes again, and they made a real mess. They both laughed. A half hour later, with a fresh mug of iced coffee. Wrapped in a light shawl, she took a seat in her favorite rocker and looked out onto the backyard. The blooming bougainvillea trees were shedding flower petals with each faint breath of wind. The place needed to be swept, but the garden was overflowing at its peak, and it looked like a slice of heaven had fallen to the earth. Reese and Harley were on the far side of the yard, lying on their stomachs on the lawn. Harley had her chin in her hands, and she watched some bugs between the blades of grass. For some reason, Harley loved bugs and didn't think they were icky at all. Reese lay next to her and was using a small stick to herd the bugs back around so they wouldn't get away. Barb remembered how they would spend hours at such activities. Witnessing the memory being relived brought a tear to her eye. Jeff came out and carefully took a seat next to her. He too had poured a coffee to bring outside. His, however, was hot and he blew on it to cool it off. They do know how to keep themselves busy, don't they? Yes, they always did. They were wonderful children. So is there anything you'd like to do special today? He asked. We could go out and take them with us. Not right now, she replied. I just want to sit here for a while and remember. After a long silence, Barbara looked over at her husband. Are they really coming over this weekend? She asked. Yes, and they promised to bring their own children. They're only a little older than these two were when I recorded them. The kids will have fun playing with the little versions of their parents. Barb reached out and grasped Jeff's arm. Just don't make recordings of them, please. Promise me. They're wonderful and they make my heart sing, but it would break my heart if they were here too. It just reminds me that I'm getting older while they're not. Harley and Reese are enough. Please don't make any more for me. I promise, he said. Then he stood and added, I'm going to stretch my legs. Do you want to come along? No, I think I'll just sit here and finish my coffee. Then her hand quickly reached out and she grasped his wrist, squeezing it lightly three times in a row. It was their silent way of saying, I love you. She let go and smiled, saying, Have I told you recently that I love the way you make my coffee? It's always perfect. Jeff smiled. I know, you tell me that quite often. Then he walked over to the side of the yard and left through the gate there. Outside, there were no houses for nearly a quarter mile. The sun was low in the sky and the air was still cool. He walked along the road and headed toward a small copse of trees about a hundred yards away. He too was sad. The earlier version of his animation process hadn't been quite perfect. Back then, the androids into which the personality matrices were loaded were perfect copies of their subjects but he hadn't yet refined the process to allow his creations to process and store new memories. That's why Harley and Reese woke up each day, identical to the day before. For them, each day was a rare day that they had a sleepover with Nana and Papa. Every day was new, even if it was destined to be a virtual repeat of the day before. Each day was new, uncluttered by memories, forever unchanging, and yet somehow still innocent and new. Following a well-worn path around the small stand of trees, he reached a small overgrown patch of grass surrounded by a low wooden fence. Stepping to the edge of the fence, he looked down into the small enclosure. The grass had grown so high that it was almost hard to see what was there. I'll need to trim this back before the weekend, he thought, since the kids will be coming over. It was the family plot. Pushing aside the grass, he read the inscription on the first tombstone. Barbara Robinson, loving wife, devoted mother, and grandmother. May she rest in blissful peace. No, the process of allowing memories hadn't been perfected by then. That's one reason that Barbara didn't remember this. Then he pushed the weeds aside to reveal the other gravestone and the inscription there. Jeff Robinson, devoted husband, inventor, 
and futurist. May he also rest in peace. Leaning back, he looked up into the sky and sighed. Yes, he'd finally perfected the flaws with memory creation, retention, and recall. But perhaps too late. The grandchildren never retained memories from one day to the next. Barb retained some new memories, but they typically only went back a couple of weeks. He, however, remembered every day, and the burden of the passing years had begun to weigh heavily on him. Sometimes, he wasn't sure if he'd done the right thing by recording himself at the end. It was all, after all, bittersweet, both wonderful and horrible at the same time. Turning, he headed back to the house and thought it would be nice to see the grandkids again this weekend. It was always on those days that Barb was the happiest. Thank you for listening. We love our listeners, fans, and patrons here at Untold Tales, and we hope you love the stories that we're bringing to you month after month on the first of each month. Thank you so much for listening, and have a wonderful day.